Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. As you can see, this time coming from not a cold studio in the United Kingdom, but a delightful sunny back garden in Adelaide, South Australia. Um, it's very nice to be here in the middle of February. As you can see, I'm in the sunshine. I'm being very careful because people are going to comment. I don't go outside without a hat normally. I don't go outside without dark glasses. I have got sun cream on and I'm only out here for a few minutes while I do this because the sun is very strong in Australia. But anyway, that's not what this episode is about. This episode is all about trucks and buses. Trucks and buses. But before I start, I want to make a quick apology for something I said in a recent episode. Now, I was talking about the Dutch railway network and their wind-powered trains. And I made a casual, off-the-cuff, unscripted comment about a Dutch politician called Gert Wilders. I called him a Nazi. And that was wrong. It was lazy, it was stupid, and, and it, very importantly, it was completely irrelevant to the topic I was talking about. The electric trains got nothing to do with Gert Wilders or his opinions. Calling people Nazis or fascists when you find their opinions offensive is really stupid. It, it's obnoxious, it's unpleasant, it's a bad habit, and it's something I normally try and avoid, but I'm very sorry that I said it. So if you want, and why would you, but you can uh, read some of the comments that uh, appear underneath that video. Uh, some of which are very, very intelligent and well-argued, some of which are <laughs> the most patronising load of old guff that white men can generate. But anyway, suit yourself if you want to have a look. But enough of that. So this episode will not refer to Nazis or communists or fascists in any way. It's about, as I said, trucks and buses. Oh yes, and the need for 20 new nuclear power stations to charge electric cars. But that bit's just too funny. That's a joke at the end, so don't worry about that. Now, I've heard this comment in the past uh, many times uh, along the lines of, it's all well and good with you and your fancy electric cars, but what about trucks and buses? You can't make them electric, can you? No, we still need diesel. I'm adopting a rather diminutive voice there because quite often those comments are coming from members of the older generation, uh, of which I am one, so I'm allowed to, OK? Now, at the time, I would have agreed. I always do because I'm nice, generally, unless I call someone a Nazi. Generally I'm nice uh, and of course I would have been wrong as I very often am. Now engineering firm Siemens have installed a two kilometre test route in Sweden to run hybrid electric trucks. Big heavy trucks powered by overhead wires like olden days trams or modern trains. The idea isn't that they electrify the entire road network, just sections of highway where the trucks run on 100% electric drive. They're also fitted with combustion engines to cover the rest of their routes. Then there's the Nikola One, which, last time I mentioned it, was essentially just a computer rendering of the planned big rig they were going to announce. Well, now they have announced it, they've released it, and here is the first demonstration model. It's a 1,000 horsepower monster with a 1,200 mile or 1,900 kilometer range on one tank full of hydrogen or and battery charge. A hybrid hydrogen fuel cell with a 320 kilowatt hour battery, which will cost around half as much to run as the equivalent size diesel truck. And these are massive things. Then of course, there's electric buses all over the place. They will become as common as diesel in the next few years and will soon overtake them. There'll soon be more electric buses on the road than diesel ones, which is a brilliant thing. In London, Sadiq Khan, the mayor, recently announced that routes 501 and 521 will exclusively run a 51-strong fleet of all-electric buses by the end of the year. Now, there's already 22 electric buses running around London, and by the end of this year, London will have the most electric buses of any city in the world. So large vehicles can and should ditch diesel just as much as small passenger cars. But where, you might ask, if you read a particular British newspaper or watch a particular show on Amazon, uh, where will all the electricity come from to power all these new electric vehicles? Ah, yes, it's that well-balanced, well-written and very carefully researched favourite, home to top journalists in the land, it's the Daily Mail. Sorry, I just had some sick in my mouth when I said those two words. They recently ran an article with such ludicrous claims that even moderate and non-ranty people got quite upset about it. The story was essentially if we transformed the entire vehicle fleet of the United Kingdom to battery electric vehicles, we, would, we could need, notice it's clever writing, we could need, wait for it, 20 new nuclear power stations to generate all the electricity they, they consume. 20 new Hinkley Point Cs. I mean, for goodness sake, at £18 billion each, that's going to cost around £360 billion. I mean, that's more than even Google's got. 
Crazy stuff. I'm glad I bought a diesel. Clarkson was right. Drill, baby, drill. Let's get fracking, etc., etc. Except when you break it down, it's not quite accurate. I'm being kind to the lovely Daily Mail journalists. I mean, they, they have our best interests at heart. Oh, wait, no. Hang on. No, I got that wrong. No, they have their tax-dodging offshore owners' best interests at heart. Sorry, I got that slightly mis- silly mistake. My fault. Now, there are currently around 31 million cars on the road of the United Kingdom. Isn't that crazy? 31 million cars. So just how wrong is the Daily Mail claim that we could need 20 new Hinkley Point Cs to generate enough electricity for 31 million cars. I mean, it's a huge map. Well, let me tell you how wrong they are. They are precisely 100% wrong. It's not even close. It is alt news writ large. It's bunkum, balderdash, and to be a little crude, it's utter bollocks. Right now, today, we could charge today. This is today or if you're watching this at night, tonight, we could charge 20 million electric cars overnight with zero increase in our generating capacity and not even reach the daytime peak demand that we get now. The UK can pump out a maximum of around 75 gigawatts. We never quite get there, but on a cold winter's day, we're close to 60 gigawatts. That's a lot of electricity. But overall demand has actually dropped in the last few years with the introduction of LEDs in particular and a general increase in energy-saving devices. Smart fridges, smart cookers, timing devices on things. When you use your washing machine, they all use less electricity. Even tumble dryers now, modern ones, are using less electricity. And of course, the jolly old rag declined to mention that 31 million vehicles connected to the grid are also a massive backup in terms of peak demand. Taking a mere one kilowatt hour from 31 million vehicles using smart uh, grid technology and uh, vehicle, vehicle to grid systems, which are being introduced now, I'm going to be using one later this year, that gives the nation 31,000 megawatt hours of electricity at their disposal, which would be, according to Daily Mail maths, just about enough for one person to make some toast. Good old Daily Mail. But sorry, it happened again. Shouldn't ever say those two words together. Anyway. That's all. That's all I've got time for. Uh, It's goodbye from me here in this gorgeous garden in the middle of Adelaide in Australia in the summer. I'm just sneaking a little bit of summer uh, while I'm I'm away from the United Kingdom. We're shooting a a couple of episodes later this week with a proper cameraman and a proper rig and stuff, amazing stuff going on here. The house I'm sitting next to doesn't use any electricity from the grid. No, none. It's got solar panels on the roof and batteries. Big, big, big batteries. So this laptop and the phone that I'm recording this on are powered 100% by solar while I'm here, as are the numerous electric cars here. But more of that in an upcoming episode. For now, I mean, I haven't even said Patreon or subscribe. I'm not going to. Oh, damn, I did say it. But for now, if you have been, thank you for watching.